this episode, we're going to talk about what every aspiring PM needs to know, and we're going to jump right into design thinking. When I talk about design thinking, I just want everybody to know this is an approach, an innovative approach to solve any creative problem. So design thinking is set up to where if you want to be able to um, come up with a new idea, whether it be an app feature, whatever, um, you can use a design thinking approach to pretty much solve anything. So at the core of what design thinking is, it is essentially getting into the head of the end user, whoever's going to be using whatever you are going to be building. So if I wanted to um, come up with a new feature on an, an existing app, before I kind of start anything, um, you would, I will look at design thinking. Now, design thinking is really a philosophy and a set of tools. So it's not just like this, like there's all of these practices that you have to do, but rather it's a philosophy and way of thinking and way of solving problems. Almost every innovative company is using some form of design thinking. Um, what I'm going to do is talk about the phases of design thinking, and then we can jump into like how I've used it in the past and some of the things that I've seen uh, that I think most of us in the product management space really need to know uh, in terms of how to use it. So design thinking as an approach, let's get into it. The first step of design thinking is growing a sense of empathy or empathizing with the end users in mind. So uh, in this phase, you're going to spend a lot of time just trying to understand who you're dealing with, who you're building for, who you're going to make these features or this app or whatever solution. It helps us whenever we observe the target end user, the target audience, you know, you have a persona or um you know you you can sense how they're thinking what they're feeling what they're doing you know, growing all of these different things these 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 um different ways that you can empathize and just simply understand who you're dealing with the second step of design thinking is defining so if you have a target audience that you want to work with um that you want to build for the next step in this is going to be defining their problem so as soon as I can say, okay, this is my target audience, can I then understand what things that they might be dealing with on a particular journey that they're going on? Um, so you want to define their problems, define the things that they're observing, define the things that uh, they're going through. That way you can start to come up with your own ideas, which is going to take me to my third or the third part of design thinking, which is, of course, ideating. So you understand who you're dealing with, you understand their problems. Now you're going to uh, come up with a unique set of um, solutions or ideas to kind of solve their problems. Um, and, you know, whatever um, you kind of had in your head, whatever approach you were trying to take, this is the step where you're going to actually come up with those ideas. So you can have like an app idea or whatever prior to you knowing um, your target audience. But like once you validate that your like your overarching idea would actually be um, something worth their time for the end user and you understand their problems, now you can come up with like the lower level solutions, the actual features, um, and you can kind of put it all together and have a better sense of what exactly you're building, not just at the high level, what vision you have, but the actual like approach, the actual um, unique features. The next step in design thinking is prototyping. So you're going to spend time uh, after you come up with this idea building like you want to get right into it, uh, make sure that whatever idea you did come up with, you actually have something that you can test, something that you can say, this is what I got out of all of this research. This is what I got out of understanding my users, um, understanding their problems, working uh, through a few ideas. Now I'm here. Now I have some maybe an MVP or a simple prototype that you can work with and test out, um, put it in front of people to get feedback because you want to create a constant feedback loop that's going to help you make better decisions down the line. So come up with your prototype and we're going to uh, shift to the next and the last phase, which is aha, it's testing. So you test, spend your time testing, putting it in front of people um, and making sure that you can validate whether your ideas are actually viable. They're actually solving the problems that you originally considered um, when you were in the second phase of ideation. So let me kind of run this through the top. Once again, you empathize first, then you work to define the problems that the people or the target audience is experiencing. You ideate, come up with the unique set of features or different ideas to solve their problems. You then prototype, you have something tangible that you can work with. Then you're going to want to put that prototype in front of people and test it out. 
So that is the full like um, the kind of like roadmap, so to speak, of how design thinking works. Um, but the good part about design thinking or the unique part is it's not really a linear process. I think building up to um, whatever you're going to come up with, like a prototype, that part is going to be linear. But in terms of like, do you have to do everything in order um, in a cycle? It doesn't exactly work like that. Like you might get to the point where you're testing and instead of going all the way back to the first step, which is empathizing, you may just need to go back to the drawing boards and come up with some new ideas because maybe the, the ideas that you originally baked into your prototype didn't actually solve anything useful for your customer. And you need a better way um, to understand that. So it doesn't really work in a linear process. Same thing for like prototyping. Maybe before you bring it into the test, you don't have a working prototype or you realize that whatever problems you define, there's gaps. So you're like, okay, I gotta go back to the, the defining phase because I don't think I define this problem or the set of problems enough. Um, now, what's important to understand about design thinking too is like, you might have questions about like, what are the practices or like, what approach should I take during this design thinking approach? Um, that's the fun part. There actually is no set of rules. The point is you need to empathize, but how you do that, I mean, whether you come up with personas, um, or you do different activities like empathy maps, coming up with journey maps, um, different things like that. You may you you may pick different design thinking activities or design sprints, um, which is basically just small iterations or chunks of um, design thinking practices that you can use or time frame. Um, but you come up with these on your on your own. What approach you take? There's not one right answer. Just like there's not one right answer on how to execute the perfect baseball game or the perfect um, you know whatever it is right there's no perfect or one right way to do a lot of things in life and design thinking works no different so when we talk about innovation that's why design thinking comes in handy is it gives you this sense of like roadmap um in terms of like these phases that you know you need to go through it's like a benchmark you know that you need to grow a sense of empathy you know that you need to define you know that you need to ideate and you know that you need to build a prototype that you can actually test so um, with that being said, I do want to talk about my experience with design thinking and some of the things that I've seen working in the tech field. So if you haven't already, uh, please like, subscribe, leave comments. Like if you guys are thinking of different things um, that I could talk about that might be beneficial to you, whether it relates to design thinking or product management, technology, anything, just leave me some comments, uh, help me understand so we can create you guys better content in the future. But with that said, I'm going to jump right back into it. I think what we were talking about was my experience with design thinking and some of the things that I've noticed in the field. So I get particularly fired up about talking about design thinking and sharing my experience because I learned something very valuable that I wanted to pass to you all. When it comes to design thinking, um, my first ever experience using design thinking actually came in college. So I worked in a program where a lot of people were aspiring UXers, UX researchers, UX designers, um, product managers, program managers, people who were looking to do or to function in roles where design thinking would be prevalent. Uh, so learning it then was like really, I would say easy because everybody had a fundamental understanding of what design thinking was. But once you step out there and get into the field, let's say you end up in a tech role uh, where design thinking is being used, one of the things you might notice is how siloed it may feel. It depends on the organization you work at. But I will say in my past experience, I was working in a team where design thinking was only being applied by my UX team. So um, as I'm using my past experience and learning new things through this UX team, I also noticed that like my product team wasn't fully engaged. And then we didn't even approach the engineers at all. Like we didn't even reach out to our devs um, to get involved in some of these design thinking activities. What I learned or what I felt like was really important from that experience was that everybody who has a stake in that customer's experience, their overall user experience and what they're going to get, what ideas you come up with, um, how you define or, or think of who your users are. It needs to come from everybody who has anything to do with whatever you're building, whatever, whatever feature or MVP or, or whatever you're coming up with, whatever prototype um, you're going to run through a test. So. That is like one of the biggest takeaways that I took from design thinking was that everybody who had a stake, whether it was somebody from the business, from the product side, from the UX, from um, the design, um, excuse me, the developers, your architects, whoever, you need to have somebody that can represent uh, that stake in the customer's overall experience. So get 
uh if you start learning about design thinking and you want to go through this just make sure that you're considering who needs to be in the room and who needs to be involved in these activities if you're an aspiring pm i would highly recommend that you be the one who takes the lead don't wait for your ux team the researcher or the designer to start talking about running these design thinking workshops if you're going and working in corporate and you are working in product management um, your perfect opportunity is around dis the discovery phase. So if you guys are starting to talk about new initiatives, coming up with these new ideas and you start doing discovery um, before you guys even talk about how you're going to build this thing or what exactly you're building, why not ask or try to approach this in a design thinking approach? Start to grow a sense of empathy for who the end users are. It's not always going to be the same exact set of users. You may have a small subset of users within the core users that you work with on a daily basis. Um, define their problems. Don't think that yesterday's problems are today's problems. Just like yesterday's price ain't today's price. Yesterday's problem is not today's problem. Problems constantly change depending on who you're talking about. Um, start to ideate, like, like take those ideas and actually come up with, I'm sorry, take, the, take those problems and come up with ideas around those problems, understand the problem first, and then bring new ideas to the table. Don't listen to, um, your big boss manager out there who says they want this done because it's going to make them look good, or it's going to make the organization look good, or because they simply thought it was cool. It may be a cool idea. It may actually be a viable idea, but why don't you start by validating that by understanding who your users are and what their problems are. Um, start with working prototypes. Don't don't just come up with these ideas and implement and think that you're done. Like have a prototype ready that you can actually test. Have something tangible to be tested. That way, when it's time to actually implement, you already have enough quality data. You have plenty of data that you can work with. You've actually put it in front of real users. You know, this is when, when, when I talk about testing, I'm talking about like usability testing or A-B testing or something along those lines that's going to give you a pretty good idea of what people are saying or experiencing when they're going through this prototype. Now, once you've gathered enough evidence, you might have skipped back into a bunch of different steps in design thinking. But once you have enough to work with, once you can validate your idea, you can validate your prototype, you've tested it, you've got enough information and you're ready to implement, boom, go ahead, um, get it ready for development. And you have something tangible to work with that you've already proven is viable enough. And you're going to have a much better chance at solving real problems and getting that return on investment for the reason why you built it in the first place. So I am going to wrap it up here, but I do want to say, um, you know, Think of design thinking as a simple set of philosophy and tools, resources that you can use, a nice roadmap to guide you as you're looking to build new things. The product management space is pretty broad, and I do think that um, a lot of times design thinking is not brought up by product managers. It's heavily re relied on by UX teams, um, but I think it's time for a lot of PMs to start learning in that space more. You guys take that lead and be the reason why it's a very cohesive way. We as products sit in the middle of the business, in the middle of technology, in the middle of customers. So shouldn't we be the ones trying to drive some of the ways that we solve problems when we're sitting there answering what we're building? Um, I think that should be up to you. What do you guys think? Leave me some comments below. Let me know if design thinking is something that you've used in the past or if it's something that after today you plan on using in the future. I got to go, but I definitely want to hear from you guys and stay tuned for more. I am back.